Have you ever tried setting a boundary with a narcissist? Ever? Well, first of all, if you have, good job on a very difficult task. Good job on going through all the emotional things that it takes to get you to the place where you're actually able to set that boundary with a narcissist, knowing that it will be met with, well, let's talk about what it'll be met with. So what happens when you set a boundary with a narcissist? Well, first of all, I'm sorry if you have, because what happens next is they don't respect that boundary. They do not listen to that boundary. They will cross the line every time. They will tear your boundary down. They will ignore the boundary. They will pretend that the boundary didn't happen, they'll challenge it, and they will gaslight you over and over to try and force you to hear how wrong that boundary was in the first place to even set. So yeah, they don't like boundaries. Narcissists don't like being told what to do. They don't like being not in charge, not in control. They, they react to not being in control by lashing out at you. They also do not like you being in control of your own will and your own destiny, your own life. They want to be in charge of it all, especially if there's something that you have to do together, like a job or co-parenting or if they're your parent. They will, the, the worst cases of boundary crossing is when you have a narcissistic parent or you're dealing with a parallel parenting situation with a, a narcissistic person because there's something at stake there. There's the family, there's the, the hierarchy, there's their version of what the family's roles are that they have to defend and they have to maintain in their head the delusion that they're right about, right? Oftentimes when you set a boundary with a narcissist, they will counter your boundary with another boundary of their own. And it's usually, or often, it can be something completely even random or off topic or circumnavigating your topic and then twisting it to making it their topic. For instance, if you went no contact with them or low contact, say you're, they're your parent and you're low contact, they will stop contacting you because of the boundary, but then they will say to other people that they set that boundary because they just can't talk to you because you're being difficult or you're going through something difficult or whatever it is. They will make it as if it's their own boundary. Um, and then they will even tell you that they're the one that set that. So it's an extremely frustrating and challenging thing to set a term for your life that keeps you protected and safe and enough removed from the narcissistic person so you're not in an emotional reaction to them and thus not feeding them supply. And at the same time, having that heard, respected, or adhered to. So I, here's an example of like a parallel parenting situation where the person is only in communication through written communication on one specific platform and the narcissistic person continually comes and tries to engage with them through text, through telephone, through in person, following them around town, on and on, you know, at the, at the child's drop off and pick up time, instead of just backing off and leaving it alone, and then communicating the way the person has asked for, they push and push. And so then what they say is, you're not doing your job as a parent, because you're not communicating with me. Well, here's if you know the history, you know, it's been proven that this person, this narcissistic person repeatedly verbally attacks this person that repeatedly gaslights this person repeatedly threatens this person even in front of the child. So obviously this boundary was placed for a very good reason, but the narcissist is going to twist it and make it about you not communicating with them. So that's what they do over and over. They'll do it in the workplace where you can set a boundary of like something with your time. So they won't push the time at the end of the day, they'll take your lunch, right? Or they won't push the time in your lunch or the end of the day, but then they'll make, they'll give you so much that you're so busy or they will bombard you with information so that you can't get your work done. So then you have to work late anyway. It's always something so that they can stay in charge and they can be the ones to control your boundaries, which then of course it's not your boundaries anymore. That's what they want. They do not want you to have them. So I am Lise Colucci, one of the life coaches at queenbeing.com. Any information you need or help with anything related to narcissism or toxic relationships, check out the information in the main description of every video. 
lots of info there, coaching, group coaching, or just any peer support that you might need. You can find it down there. I uh, will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.